listeners. Hello, friends and fellow abolitionists. And hello to the representatives of the United States of America. My name is Susanna Cardona. I chair the German Coalition to Abolish the Death Penalty. First, thank you all for being here today to listen to our speeches and our stories. Thank you also to Voices for Death Row inmates for inviting me today. It's a pleasure and an honor for me to be here with you all today. Murder, justice, revenge, death, loss, pain, the death penalty, justice. Today, you're listening to many personal stories Stories which tell you about the pain of losing a loved one. Stories which tell you about the feelings one has when witnessing an execution. Stories which tell you about the agony one feels when being innocently sentenced to death. I wondered whether I should also talk about some of my personal experiences. I, too, visited death rows in the United States. I, too, have friends who were exonerated from death row. I, too, have friends who have lost loved ones to murder, but still, despite this, cannot accept the system of capital punishment. And friends of mine are fighting for the lives of their sons who are on death row. But all these experiences are not my personal story. They are not the reason why I object to and work against the death penalty worldwide. I am driven by the thought of humanity, by the dream that people do not have to live in fear of their lives being taken away by the authorities. I am driven by the issues of justice, of fairness, and of rights. I am driven by the rights of each and every human being. And I'm driven by the thought that humans wrongly think that they can take another human life and that they can do so with the authority and protection of a legal system they themselves created. I recall my first encounter with the death penalty, a TV documentary where the presenter was talking about the living conditions on death row in Texas. I still recall the sense of shock that I felt when I heard the things there. Solitary confinement, not only for weeks, but for years. Regular strip searches, thus taking away the dignity of the prisoners. Tiny concrete boxes being used as prisoners' cells. Almost no yard exercise, no working programs, no craft sessions, no TV. Knowing your date and time of death for a month in advance. Executions which have not been proven to be painless. And so it went on and on. This just couldn't be true. They're talking about the United States and not about some misanthropic dictatorship. There must be something wrong with this documentary. The United States would never allow such human rights abuses. I just couldn't get it out of my mind, and so I finally started checking on the internet. And I found out that things are even worse than what I had first learned. In the introduction of its first report to the UN High Commission on Human Rights in conjunction with the Universal Periodic Review, the government of the United States writes, from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights to the ensuing covenants and beyond, the United States has played a central role in the internationalization of human rights law and institutions. We associate ourselves with the many countries on our continents that are sincerely committed to advancing human rights. And we hope this UPR process will help us to strengthen our own system of human rights protections and encourage others to strengthen their commitments to human rights. Yes, I do agree 
that the United States has played an important role in the internationalization of human rights. But do human rights end at the gate of a prison? Or do human rights stop when it comes to the decision of life or death? Where are the human rights when we take someone's life? We associate ourselves with the many countries on all continents that are sincerely committed to advancing human rights, the U.S. report states. Looking at Amnesty's 2009 death penalty statistics, the U.S. unfortunately associates itself with countries whose commitment to human rights is nearly poor. In the order of executions, there are the following countries, China, Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, the United States, Yemen, Sudan, Vietnam, and so on. These are the countries which the United States places itself on the same level. China, Iran, Iraq. Are these the countries you want to be compared with when it comes to human rights? I'm chilled just thinking about China or Iran in relation with human rights. One hundred and fifty nations worldwide have abolished the death penalty, or at least have not carried out an execution in the past ten years. Unfortunately, forty-five countries are still not on this list. The USA is one of them. In early August, Mrs. Clinton urged Iran to respect the fundamental freedoms of its citizens. She also raised concerns about the fate of Sakine Mohammadi Ashtiani, who was originally sentenced to death by stoning. And, as a relevant side point on human rights, while the Iranian later on stated that she would not face execution by stoning, she might still be executed for, as the Iranian authorities state, her role in the murder of her husband. Mrs. Clinton said these words in early August. And on September 23rd, Teresa Lewis was executed in Virginia for her role in the murder of her husband. A woman with an IQ of only 72, Mrs. Lewis was found guilty of organizing the murder of her husband and her stepson. She was sentenced to death and executed and the actual killers got life sentences. Only days before Mrs. Lewis' death, Iran accused the U.S. of human rights violations and of double standards regarding this execution. And as much as I despise what is going on in Iran, as much as I hate what the Iranian government is doing to its people when it comes to human rights, I do have to admit that Iran has a point there. If a country allows and facilitates death by execution, it has no grounds whatsoever to forbid or condemn this in another country. So as much as I would love for the United States to be standing with us in this fight for human rights worldwide, based on the death penalty issue alone, the U.S. cannot stand with us. Can the U.S. put its own house in order Interestingly, the U.S. government does admit that there are flaws in its criminal justice and death penalty systems. For example, the above-mentioned report states, the federal government utilizes a system for carefully examining each potential federal death penalty case. This system operates to help ensure that the death penalty is not applied in an arbitrary, capricious, or discriminatory manner and to promote indigent defendants receiving competent representation by qualified attorneys. Many of our states have adopted procedures of their own to provide experienced counsel for indigent defendants. In addition, existing federal law permits DNA testing in relevant federal and state cases. Did you notice that only many, but not all of the American states have adopted procedure to provide counsel? So, a defendant may be lucky to be tried in a state which provides him with a counsel. But if unlucky, he or she will stand in court without legal help. And did you notice that existing federal law only permits DNA testing? It does not demand it. 